We're going to move on to the first uh, presentation of the day. I'm going to bring on your first sort of a presenter. Uh, this man is a manager at the World Bank for Disaster Risk Management. He has been with Understanding Risk since the beginning. He also has a hard surname to pronounce. I will get this wrong. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Francis Gasquia. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I insisted on coming to the stage today uh, because we will be announcing uh, a big new initiative under Understanding Risk. So first, let me uh, say hello to everybody. Hello to everybody online. I hear that there are quite a few hundreds of you uh, from mostly Asia, but around the world. So it's great to have you all there. Now, it's an announcement where I can't actually tell you what it is. You're going to discover it through the session. All I can say is that it's about making the invisible visible. Throughout understanding risk over the last 11 years, more and more we have been talking not just about the science, not just about all the new technologies, not just about new concepts, but also about how we better communicate about risk. All of us who work on disaster risk management, we know that one of the main issue, really one of the main conundrum in disaster risk management is that when you do everything right, you have nothing to show. Nothing happens. And so how do you actually promote more action to tackle the risk of uh, disaster and adverse natural event? And so we will be launching a new initiative to try to reverse this trend, to try to showcase uh, good intervention in disaster risk management. We'll go through the session in two phases. The first phase will have Pablo, who was introduced yesterday. Maybe we can bring Pablo on the screen. Pablo is the artist in residence at uh, NUSIPUR. I'm not going to try to pronounce the full name. Um, this is among many of his other titles. He's also been with Understanding Risk uh, ever since, I think. I can't remember an Understanding Risk without Pablo. And then we're going to go to uh, David Lallemand, who's an assistant professor at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, part of Nanyang University, who will uh, tell us more about this initiative. He's been working on it with Marikar Rabonsa, who's there for uh, quite some time. So. Have fun. The first part is quite interactive. You know Pablo. Never, never a lack of surprises. And then we'll have uh, David. So over to you, Pablo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you again, friends, uh, in Singapore and around the Asian continent and beyond uh, for this opportunity to join you at the Understanding Risk Asia event. It's a miracle to be back because sometimes people change their minds, you know. Um, what I know is that, as Francis said, when we do things well, people may not notice that risk didn't become disaster. We have to help people imagine what it would be like to have bad outcomes and then imagine what it takes to avoid to avert those disasters. And then we have to get people inspired to do it. So today we're going to invite you to harness your superpowers of imagination. Like yesterday, we're going to embrace a rather intensely interactive approach, which is going to be risky because you know technology can fail us because i don't know if the people will have too much delay or if your own internet connection fails so please bear with us as we try like yesterday to combine people on site in singapore with people joining online in doing something together that can help us think about this issue so as mentioned as you may recall from yesterday I'm Pablo, I'm from Argentina. I used to be a full-time researcher on climate and disasters. I became a humanitarian worker. I joined the National University of Singapore, uh, IPOR, you can ask Sam how to say it, 
uh, in order to bring creative communications to this space. And I want to share with you something small but important about my background. I grew up in Argentina in an Italian speaking household. And I want to share with you one of the people who helped me understand the value of creative communication. This is the first moment where technology can fail. Thanks for your patience. There we go. I'm going to push these buttons here. Let's see if I can make it big, if I can make myself small and semi-transparent. Excellent. That, dear friends, is Maria Cesarina Ottavina Becchini di Bertoncini, also known as La Nonna, my grandma. This is a photo from her 100th birthday. She lived to age 106. She was a spectacular risk manager, always thinking of what could go wrong and how to take care of it and avert potential negative consequences. Now, when I had crazy ideas, she would tell me, Ma Pablo, quello è difficile come pestar la luna. That is as hard as stepping on the moon. And guess what? Humans stepped on the moon before I was born. In her mind, something that seemed impossible, like stepping on that moon, in her lifetime became very doable. Similarly for us, things are changing very rapidly, whether it's technology, policy, communications, a changing climate, who knows what's coming in our lifetimes. But we can, we must try to imagine and prepare for it. So what we're going to do today is to ask you to embrace a premise that you will find confusing, which is that you will become journalists. You're no longer who you think you are. You're a journalist with a time machine. You can go into tomorrow. You can go into next year. You can go into next decade, next century. You can see what is going on. And your job is to come up with headlines that your media conglomerate may publish for everyone to see. Now, what, you may wonder, what does it have to do with risk? Well, of course, good headlines tend to be about good news or bad news. Could be bad news about disasters or something else. Could be good news about saving lives or something else. Now, I'm going to first prime your pump of the imagination by helping you understand what is it that constitutes a good headline. Here are some examples. Man walks on the moon, said a newspaper. Of course, you can understand exactly when that news was published. That was news then, it wouldn't be a news today. Notice also that it doesn't take the length of a scientific abstract. It's very brief so that the letters can be big and capture the attention. Notice also that there is something poetic about it. Man walks on the moon. You could have a, a rap song or something going on. There is also great war ends. Yes, and there are many other, you know, the one with panic may have more information about specific parameters. When you create a headline, you want certainly to try to be brief. You also are trying to convey something that is unique, that, is, uh, that attracts the attention and the imagination of the readers. You're trying to be as specific as possible, either explicitly or implicitly. You're going to try to be useful in what you communicate and, if possible, a sense of urgency. You, my friends, very soon are going to start writing headlines and you're going to be assessed in your performance as a journalist. There will be editors reviewing what you write. There will be a senior editor choosing the one that matters. We are going to be playing this headlines game. Very soon, we will be guiding you to the tool that will help participants online become peers, not second-class citizens, full embrace of this premise where you will be a journalist with a time machine. What do you see in that future that is worthy of news? For those online, like yesterday, we will be using a special uh, website. For those on site, you should have near you a piece of paper 
make sure you have a pen handy. We're going to stay safe in terms of COVID, but we're going to uh, engage you creatively. So, uh, dear colleagues from uh, the IT team, from the organizing team, can you please share with our online participants the link that I gave you earlier? It's bit.ly ly slash ur dash Asia. Uh, please let me know when people have received that. And uh, some or, or Francis or someone from the conference venue, if you can confirm that the the link has been shared. I see. Yes, received. Thank you very much. So those of you who are online should be able to see that blue screen. You're a journalist with a time machine. What do you see that is newsworthy? Participants on site, make sure you have your paper or something you can write on, even if it's a, a digital device. Uh, my colleague David is going to be helping advance uh, the online site. So David, please uh, advance to the next one uh, as you share a screen. Uh, participants online, you're welcome to change your name from anonymous to your real name or a pen name if you want to be, you know, an aspiring creator. And then click on the little arrow uh, so that you advance. Our first task for everyone, for those online and for those on uh, the conference venue, is to imagine what words belong to those future headlines. This is a conference about risk. And we need you to come up with words that belong to headlines that convey good news or that convey bad news. Each one of you is going to be tasked with the responsibility of writing at least one good news and at least one bad news. As you see, my colleague David, who is based in the US, he wrote the word hurricane. And after you write in the center the word hurricane, you click the plus sign to add that to your bag of words. Participants on site, write between three and 10 words that you think belong to that headline about the future. What should this headline be about? What good news can be conveyed with these words you choose? You may notice that if you type enter online, you get a constellation of words above words that are related, sometimes synonyms on the bottom right words that rhyme or words that alliterate, if that helps you have inspiration. To get words in the bag of words, you click on the plus sign. Participants on site, start writing on your paper. You need to have three to 10 words. Make sure that your writing is clear because we want other people to be able to read what you write. Let's give you a, a couple moments, uh, less than two minutes. And uh, right, David just wrote kittens. Maybe he's interested in the future and what role can kittens play in headlines that have to do with disasters, with risk, with too much or too little or something, of avoiding human suffering and pet suffering. Be creative, be inspiring. Think of my grandma. Who would have guessed that humans would be stepping on the moon in her lifetime? What could happen in your lifetime that is newsworthy? People on site, use that paper. Make sure to write big, loud, and clear. You're a journalist with a time machine. You're trying to create headlines about the future, good news and bad news. Let's give you 20 seconds or less before we move on to the next phase. What words belong to those headlines? By now, people on site, you may have written two or three words, maybe more. If you want, start looking around your table. What did other people write? Can you find inspiration in any of those words? Let's give you a couple moments. And David, maybe let's move on to the next screen. Now that you have had a chance to imagine what words belong 
to those future headlines. For those participants who are joining online, you will have seen that now you're invited to type a headline there. Remember the advice, try to keep it short. Remember the advice, try to be unique, to be conveying a sense of urgency. Now, this is about the future. What could be happening in a decade? You will write something in that space where it says type your headline. Then you will click the yellow button for submit. And that will be made available to the editors that make decisions about what to publish or not. You are just a field journalist. You are out there with your time machine looking and if you see something that is not particularly inspiring, like a child under a tree reading a book, that's very nice, but it's not a headline. But maybe you see something about disasters that are happening, or people making decisions that are right or wrong, or heroic. Remember to look in the bottom of your screen, for those of you who are online, you will see your bag of words. For those who are on site, remember the words you wrote, maybe the words you saw others write, and write some headlines. For people on site, we need everyone to write at least one good news headline and at least one bad news headline. Be as prolific as you can. Ideally, each person will have written like five headlines or more. I'm going to go silent and invite all of you online and on site to write headlines about the future. I am particularly interested in something very important that was mentioned by Francis. How do you portray an instance when a disaster was averted, when some action led to some bad thing not happening? Can you craft your good news, not just like, you know, um, the summer was nice or some external force, but some action that led to avoiding a loss, to avoiding human suffering? David, if you can give me a sense of how many headlines have been submitted so far online, that would be appreciated. Feel free to speak. On. We've got, let's see, 17 headlines so far. Excellent. Let's keep it coming, friends. Be imaginative. Think of Asia as a continent. Think of your nation. Think of your town. Think of your home. Or you can think of the planet. You could think beyond the planet if you want. What headlines can you write for all of us? those online. I wish you success. Now, while we're doing all of this, I want to mention that a person that you have seen before is going to join us very soon in this very session in his role as senior editor of this media corporation that we all work with. And he is going to keep us on our toes. So, friends online, be more prolific. Please write many headlines. We need to reach dozens of headlines. Share your imagination. Remember what you wrote. Very nice. This is almost like a, a moment when you can think of all that happened yesterday in understanding risk, what did you hear that could shape the future? What belongs to the future of risk? What actions can lead to catastrophe? What actions can avert catastrophe? Keep your pens sharp. Imagine that future. It's a future that you and us can shape. 
your submissions are going to be seen by others, both online and on site. So people on site, a reminder to have your headlines written clearly. Make sure the size of your font is sufficiently big. And let's keep those headlines coming. Remember, the bad news should be bad. The good news should be inspiring and admirable. David, can you update me on how many headlines we have so far? All right. We've got 32. Excellent. So let's give you less than a minute. I hope that we can get several more headlines, both on site and online. Again, the future of risk. What are those good news? What are those bad news? I'll go silent for a full half minute so that you can concentrate and write on site or type online. Good luck. Your time is almost over. Please click that yellow button and submit if you haven't already, because your time is running out. And colleagues on site, now comes a time of upgrades. David, let's advance to the next phase. So our colleagues online are going to be seeing one headline at a time. And in the bottom of the screen, they will see a little heart, which they can leave untouched if the, if the headline, in their opinion, doesn't deserve to be published. Or if it makes their heartbeat go up, they can be clicking on that heart, indicating, yes, this I like for publication. There is a total of uh, almost 40 headlines, so you can click on the heart or not and click the arrow to advance. This is for participants online. Uh, David, if you want, uh, stop sharing screen so I can get a better taste of the room. Because, dear colleagues on site, I am happy to introduce you to the senior editor in charge of making the big decisions in our news conglomerate. He has earned a Pulitzer Prize for his talent in writing and many additional rewards for his ability to manage the news process. Unfortunately, he can be a little grouchy, he can make fun of people, but we love his talent. Please welcome to the room, Mr. Sam C, Pablo? who is going to elicit from the room an invitation to help people see what other people wrote so that you can advise him on which headlines may be worth it and then we may go on the online headlines. Mr. Sam C, would you like to join yes. us? Yes, I am here, Pablo. All I have to say right now is thank you for boring us all to death. My goodness, sounded like a sad ASMR YouTube video of a man going, write the headlines, your thoughts matter, believe in yourself. So my job here as senior editor is to find out what headlines you have written at your tables and if any of them will be usable. The usable ones we will print on our newspaper. The unusable ones we will give to the Straits Times. So, let's see what we have in our universe, not the one in Singapore. We're in an imaginary place. Don't arrest me. So, we have one table over here. What have you got so far? Table, you don't even have a number. Do you have a headline worth sharing with us? Good or bad? Decent, whatever you like. No, we've got we got a microphone then, so the online community can hear. You've got to flick it up. Hello. Yes, you know how a microphone works. Good for you. 
Okay, so um, a, a bad headline. Mm -hmm. uh, pumped for Trump, Donald Trump's presidency resumes. Oh, that's the worst one so far. Very good. We want bad news to generate more good news as well. Do you have anything else? Yes. Okay, so I'll go with a good one. Uh, HIV, no longer KIV. <laughs> I like the pun. You got, you got good makings, kid. You know how alphabets work. Good for you. Good. We like table two. We like those two. We're going to go to table papaya. Table papaya in the center over there. And that's you. Whomever there likes to share. Everyone there, so scared. We believe in you, miss. Um, okay, this might be an example of what not to do with the headline, but I'm gonna go with uh, bad news first. So I put down thousands displaced in Manila Bay by storm surge, 13 dead. Was that the headline or the entire article? Yes. It's a bit on the long side. I gotta knew that keep, was coming. Gotta keep it snappy, <laughs> snappity snap. Do you have what? Do you have like a good headline? Let's put some good news into these yeah, people's lives. Yeah, this is lives. like all sunshine and rainbows. But um, okay, here goes. Sea walls in Singapore keep storm at bay. Adaptation efforts fail. <laughs> My goodness, have you considered writing a novel? <laughs> You'd be perfect at it. You you would win one of them Pulitzers like I got. Perfectly unemployed. Yeah. Yeah. Very lovely. You sound like you're happy to be here. All right, let's go over to the to the iper table. I purr. That sounds like Apple made a cat. I purr. Alright. Let's look at the big staunch man there. Hello, sir. Hello, what do you hello. got for us? Hello. So here's, here's a little bit of a future one. So mm -hmm. we have uh, uh, NASA discovers how to control the climate. Ooh. NASA actually gets funding for once. My goodness. <laughs> That's a fuss. Alright, let's hear some bad news. Unless that was the bad news. Yeah. So... Global vaccination efforts fail and herd immunity. Oh, no, that's, that's too close to the chest. <laughs> a bit too close to the chest there. Some of us want to travel in a few weeks' time. Well, very good, very good. Let's go over to the table behind you. Or have someone hand it over because you can't give it for some reason. That If you handed it over, that would be against COVID restrictions. But if we handed it to a man to hand it over, that's okay. <laughs> It's okay, the SDA guy isn't even looking at us right now. Go back at your phone. Go, go play your Candy Crush, sir. All right, let's go to uh, the table at the back over there. Let's go to them. Hello, table. Who'd like to present? None of you. Come on, don't be cowards. Speak up. What's your name, son? Uh, Raphael. Speak up. What's your name? Raphael. Louder. <laughs> <laughs> Louder. I said louder, son! What do you have for headlines? Come on, put it out now! Uh, growing old is dead. Growing old is dead. I don't think you understand how time works. <laughs> headlines, not obituaries. Now, let's hear some good news. Let's hear some good news. What you got? Climate change averted. I'm sorry, what? Climate change averted. Climate change averted? My good. Now, that is good news. Now, that's what we want. A life, bright future. Nothing says a bright future than a man yelling as a giant head appears behind him. This isn't dystopian at all. Very good, sir. We're going to hand over to this table of uh, illustrious gentlemen. Now, yes, it is illustrious gentlemen. <laughs> One of them is the director of IPER. Nope, he's, he's delegated like a good director of IPER. He's like, you do the job, not me. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm JJ. Uh, nice to meet you. Start with some bad good news. Whatever you like. Man steps on the earth again. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> All right. Now let's hear some good news. Last plastics removed. Last what? Plastics removed. The last plastic removed. My goodness. The world will just be lovely, recyclable paper. Cardboard, wood, it's gonna be a hard time to use toilet paper, but it's gonna be good for the environment. All right, we've got, uh, let's see, if, um, I think the two tables over there seem a bit hesitant to play in. Does anyone on the other two tables want to join in, or are we good? Oh, oh, okay, they have volunteered. Yes, a tribute. It's like the Hunger Games, but with words, which was how the Hunger Games was written, it was a book. Hello, miss. 
So, uh, bad oh, news. Hello, sir. Sorry. 2021, I have misgendered you. Oh, no, I'm going to get cancelled. <laughs> hello, person. Uh, bad news. Ice sheet collapses as sea levels to rise. Ooh. Yeah, see, you focus on the climate because they went climate. You went specific. You looked at the sea levels. I like the specificity in you, person. Tell me some good news. Good news. Floating flats fuel storm tourism. What? <laughs> Floating flats, like buildings, or is it like flat heels? Buildings. Floating buildings fuel storm tourism. Ah, so we found a way to monetize climate disaster. <laughs> Good for you. The world's ending. Let's make money. I see someone here works for BP. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, thank you very much. Now, uh, junior editor Pablo, what? What do we do now? You tell me, you tell me. I'm too busy to think of what to do. Yeah, we know that you're very busy, but we want your, your guidance and maybe the guidance of participants on site in the room to help us review the submitted headlines contributed by our field journalists joining this conference online. So what we're going to propose is that my colleague David uh, shares the screen, sharing one at a time some randomly chosen headlines contributed by participants. And then you can, with your masterful team management skills, ask the participants in the room to indicate whether they think, with any gesture of your choice, that uh, the, the author of a headline right. should be printed or right. not. Right. We're in your so, hands. So basically, you all will be senior editors. You're going to decide if the headline's good enough. Now, I'm not going to bother to look at it till later. So I'm not even looking at it. I don't know how words work. So if you think the headline's good, just go meh. If you think it's bad, just go meh. Those exact sounds. Let's try meh. Perfect. Now you sound like real journalists. All right. I think we have the first headline. What do you think? Oh, bad. No, we don't like this one. Move on. I will look at it later. It's second headline. <laughs> I see very mixed messages. I'm curious to find out what this is later. I'm, I'm going to say a mixed message is still a message. So we're going to give it a little heart. Heart this one. All right. Next one. Mm -hmm. No. Boo. Boo. Terrible. Next one. Oh, you're so judgmental, aren't you? I like that in you. No, kick it to the curb. Next one. You know, there are other noises you can make, right? Bad. Move it along. Oh, oh, really bad, really bad. Set it on fire. Burn it alive. Why is it getting worse? Who wrote these headlines? I don't even, I'm going to have to look at them later. I am terrified. Now, Next Mr. One. Senior Editor, may, may, yes. I, may I make an offer? I yes. want to remind the, the contributors that are giving you advice that they shouldn't be deciding whether or not something is published based on whether they like or not the news. It should be whether the headlines is yes. a well-written headline about an interesting news. I have observed that, of course, your decision matters most. Of course. But some of, course. of those headlines were saying interesting things. And if we fail to publish some of those good news or some of those bad news, uh, well, you know, we may be um, replaced by some other competitor corporation. Yes. So yes. a we reminder that this is not about I don't like the bad news. Is that is the bad news worthy of publication? Mm -hmm. Over to we you. We need to keep things unbiased. Just because we don't like the news doesn't mean we don't want to print it. We want to print things that catches an eye, has a reaction. If we just printed the things that we liked, we would be a news that rhymes with socks. So we can't have that. So let's go on to the next one. Don't vote with your heart. Vote with your head. Next headline. Nope, we, we got... Eh, 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 eh. Finally. We got something you liked. Give it a heart. Give this one a heart. I'm going to need to get some water in a bit. This voice was not a good choice. Next headline. 
No, no, they don't like this one. Okay, we're gonna just do two more and then we're gonna get to the main review. So just second last one, second last one. Okay, people like that, okay. Some good news. All right, final one, make your vote count. Final headline. Very, very well received. One person's pretending to have a good time. Good for you, sir. Positivity. Yes, all right, we'll give this one a heart. And could I possibly trouble someone on the team to help me get a bottle of water? Hopefully in a safe to dispose recyclable water bottle. Lovely, all right. Junior editor, I think we've, we're good here. I think we're good here, junior editor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boss. We're so grateful for your ability to Thank command you, the room and elicit. Uh, what we know is that just like everyone in the room has expressed their preference for yes or no publication, the same is true of all the editors across Asia and across the world who also offered their advice for publication. So when our colleague David can uh, push his magic buttons with the technology, we will be able to see all the headlines ranked from the most resonant to the least resonant. So I imagine you are seeing the screen. The one that got the most resonant was catastrophic earthquake shakes five continents. Now that's one hell of an unprecedented uh, headline. I defer to you, Mr. Um, senior Editor. I know that with so many Pulitzer Prizes and so on you're in your mm -hmm. pocket, you may be more critical than the rest of us, but we'll let you advance now that you can see them because until now you couldn't, nope. tell us, should it be printed or not? And, why, and what does it tell you about disasters and, and doing the right thing or not? I, it tells me you have an earthquake that can shake most of the world, but not Antarctica for some reason. Everyone forgets about Antarctica. Always say, oh, so it's five continents. So you also forgot Australia. <laughs> Terrible, but I like it. It, sh it brings to mind of shattering news. So we're going to publish this one. Let's go on to the next one. I'm also going to get some opinion from the people on the floor. If you like it, do it. The earth is healed. Oh, so we don't want to put the word news in a news headline. That's like getting a book going, hey, it's the book, the book. What do you think? Eh, 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 no. You don't, you don't make the subtext text. That's the rules. Next one. And Mr. Mr. Sam, you're also invited to propose a modification to the headline if you think that the idea is good, but the wording is bad. As always, up to you. Yes, I think for this one, as we know for World Wars, the number goes at the end. It's World War Three, not the Third World War. This isn't some Regency play. Like King Louis, like King Louis IV, you gotta put it at the end. To remove the the, World War III starts. Subtext, the news. Very good. Okay, that one can go to print. Next up. Next up. I, I believe this was the one y'all were so happy about. One, one man excited for nuclear power. I've got a film to sh I've got a TV series to show you. It's called Chernobyl. <laughs> you're gonna love it. Yes, it is hot. Hot. This is good. We, this is something we can all look forward to. Safe, convenient, and no more meddling by politics. Very good. Next one. Next one. Oh, someone's getting fired. Oh! <laughs> this is what happens when you get these things. Before, after. Before, after. <sighs> I'm afraid we're gonna have to repeat. We're gonna have to print that one again. We printed it the first time. All right, next up, let's see. Five likes. Oh, I thought you wrote long titles. My, Philippines records zero casualty despite being hit by a super tyke. Foon, my good. No, just Philippine, it's okay in the Philippines. Very nice, like the tourism slogan. It's more okay, in, no, it's more safe in the Philippines. That's what we go for. Uh, I would say, Junior editor, we should look at three more and then we wrap it up. All right, yes, three more. Last three, make them count, make them count. And I want y'all to go, yeah, or boo. boo. <laughs> People are booing. <laughs> Do you not understand the point of this conference? 
The whole point of the conference is we work together. You all just win coordination. It's it's 10 a.m. There's a weird guy doing a voice. We want to go home. So no, we don't want this. The people here and at home don't like friendship. Ooh, battle between humans and robots. Ooh, I I think this is a movie. Not really the news. This is this is a. I believe they called this a sponsored post. I like this one. We will print this one so we have money. All right, last one, junior editor. Last one. Ah! No! Again? Again? How many? T ah, Singapore. Ah! Well, we'll print that one. Well, <sighs> very good job for everybody here for helping us decide. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very lent. No! Why are you applauding the lockdown? Why are you applauding the lockdown? All right, junior editor, you 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 do the wrap up. I'm gonna take a break. Junior editor, you go ahead, junior. Very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. I'm Senior sleep Editor now. Sam C. We are so grateful to you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, we are seeing the rest of the headlines. I want to congratulate each and every one of you for having embarked on this adventure of imagining the future, what constitutes good news and bad news. And I, I'm sure you noticed that it's easier to write bad news headlines than it is to write good news headlines. The question we confront is, what can you do? What can the understanding risk community do to help more good news happen showing that we can, that we must create good news. Look at that, flood averted with new drain completed early. Is it likely that it will be published? I don't know, but we want that. We want to embrace the good news when the good news happen because we make them happen. We have to work together, even if cooperation is boring news, <laughs> Omicron is ominous. Good news maybe do not sell, but we want to see more of that. So with this, I want to express my immense gratitude to Sam again for his joyful uh, enrichment of this participatory approach, which have blended together our online participants and our on-site participants. Thank you to all. Thank you, organizers, for enabling this risk-taking uh, of the creativity flowing from participants to all of us. I want to thank you also, uh, David Joswick, who has been behind the scenes helping all of this happen from the colleagues at Good Focus, Good Games. And, uh, and with this, I am going to invite our other David, uh, David Laleman, to come and join us to share what awaits in this session. Thank you all. Delightful to have been part of this conversation. And I wish you a wonderful rest of your Understanding Risk Asia conference. Thank you, and over to you, David. Please welcome to stage the Head of Disaster Analytics at NTU, David Lalamant. All right. Hello, hello. All right, uh, thank you very much. Good morning to everyone in the room. Sorry. You, you can take off your mask when you're on stage. Yeah, that's why I do it. Uh, thank you, Senior Editor. Um, well, good morning to everyone in the room. Good afternoon, good evening, and possibly good night to those of you joining us online. Um, I am very happy to be here. I was very excited to see a lot of the good news headlines um, that you all shared. And um, as Francis mentioned earlier, we've been working together, uh, the Understanding Risk Community, my lab, um, to think about how we can have more such good news headlines. And so we're very excited to be launching a new project together today. Uh, and before I tell you more about that, we wanted to share a short movie. Throughout history, we have learned many ways to build resilience. With climate change, these interventions are becoming ever more important. The goal of disaster risk management is to protect us from hazards happening all around us. Some we hear about, some we don't. Today, we wish to celebrate those that we don't hear about. We want to celebrate the engineers, 
planners, policy makers, social creators, community leaders, the scientists, the believers. Those who see the elephant in the room, striving to avoid a potential doom. The heroes whose humble, dedicated and long-term work is invisible. The projects they build don't make the headlines, but are necessary for us to do the thousands of ordinary things we do every day by keeping disasters at bay. In a world with ever-increasing environmental shocks, nothing happening is extraordinary. The Averted Disaster Award wants to acknowledge these hidden heroes, shed light on successes in disaster risk management and what might have been, and to recognise the outstanding work of those who invest in measures that keep us safe. Presenting the Averted Disaster Award, a celebration of normality. All right, um, so we're very excited to be announcing the Averted Disaster Award today. Um, and you can find out more information on the website. But before that, we wanted to spend just a few minutes to tell you a little bit more about the background of this award, the history of the award, and uh, some of the work and research that our group has been doing on this topic. Um, so I'm the head of the Disaster Analytics for Society Lab at Nanyan Technological University in Singapore. Um, and I've been part of the Understanding Risk community since the first ever Understanding Risk conference in Washington, D.C. in 2010. Um, and together with my group and other colleagues, uh, we've been working to try to develop methods to help us quantify the benefits of past mitigation interventions. And I particularly wanted to highlight two colleagues, Marika Robanza, who's with me today, and Yolanda Lin, who's an assistant professor at University of New Mexico. So one of our motivations for this is that as uh, people who work in disaster risk management, we think we spend a lot of time thinking about catastrophe, thinking about loss, thinking about damage, about vulnerability, um, really spending a lot of time seeing the glass half empty, right? Which, which is why uh, uh, you know the comedian this morning uh, said that we need comedians because otherwise this can get pretty depressing. Um, but more, more importantly, I think it's important for us to also spend time thinking about the ways that glass is also half full, thinking about successes. Um, Sir Peter Gluckman yesterday kind of alluded to this idea uh, when he said that no one cares about the 50 averted uh, terrorist attacks, they only think about the one that, wa that wasn't averted, right? Um, but it, in fact, it's important for us to highlight the, the averted disasters um, because those are the ones that we need to learn from uh, we need to emulate them, adapt them, and scale them elsewhere in communities around the world that need them. It's also important to highlight these because when decision makers use their political capital to um, invest in um, what the other keynote speaker mentioned called um, the silent prevention actions, which I really like that term, um, those are brave decisions because they, the, these actions don't get uh, much attention. And so by better acknowledging and highlighting these interventions, perhaps we can in incentivize more such brave decisions. The, the issue ultimately that we're trying to address here is that a lot of these disaster risk management interventions, particularly when successful, are invisible. So Marikar, why are these invisible? Yeah, that's a very good question, David. And it is true that successful disaster risk mitigation. When it's so successful, it can be invisible. And the reason why is that when the mitigation is so successful, there are no buildings destroyed, there are no people affected. So basically, nothing happens. And when nothing happens, people do not notice and the journalists do not get excited to report nothing happening. So actually, we can test that in this room the viewers online can also join. Can I ask a show of hands for those who have heard about Hurricane Katrina? All right, of course, I assume most of you. How about Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines? Yes. But how about Cyclone Fanny? All right, yeah, as I would expect, 
uh, there's not much hands for Cyclone Fanny. So this cyclone, it is one of the largest cyclones that made landfall in India in recent history. But despite of affecting a very heavy, heavily populated area in India, there were very few fatalities. And that was because of this very well executed evacuation effort during that time. So it was so successful that it was, it didn't make much news. So in our lab, this is one of the situations where we identify that success is made invisible, where the perception is that nothing is happening. But actually what we want to shed light on is that there are good efforts and that nothing happening is extraordinary, and it is. So another situation that we identified that success is made invisible is amid a catastrophe. For example, in the 2015 Nepal earthquake, there was widespread destruction and numerous tragic fatalities. But amid this catastrophe, there were successful interventions that also need to be highlighted and celebrated. For instance, the government of Nepal implemented this earthquake retrofit program for school buildings. And during this earthquake, none of those schools that were strengthened collapsed. And that needs to be celebrated. So in that situation, the focus is on the catastrophe. And what we want to shed light on is that amid the catastrophe, there are successful interventions that can be celebrated or should be celebrated. We highlight more situations like that in our paper. So if you want to learn more, we will make a draft of this um, available to everyone. And uh, yeah, so actually, is there a next slide? Okay, yeah, um, actually, since now you saw the invisible, invisible successes made invisible, now the next important question, <laughs> how do we make this invisible successes visible? What do you think, David? Rated prior to uh, Cyclone Fanny. And in both cases, while there's a lot of uncertainty, as you can see from, um, from the spread of the distributions, one thing that is certain is that hundreds, if not thousands, of lives were saved from these interventions. So with this uh, change in thinking, it's not that nothing happened. Something extraordinary happened. Uh, and that needs to be celebrated because that is truly amazing. And this doesn't necessarily require complex analytics, um, rather than counterfactual analysis or you, you think probabilistic methods. Um, you can also just use counterfactual thinking. And so for, for those of you in, in Singapore in the room, you probably all remember uh, the, the floods that occurred in mid-April earlier this year. It was the largest rainfall in 40 years, um, and it caused uh, some flooding of the roads and traffic delays and so forth. And this was all over the news for the coming days. And one of the, the media agencies uh, contacted me about this and they, they asked me this question. They said, the Singapore government have invested billions of dollars in flood risk reduction infrastructure, and yet there was this flood. How do you explain this failure? And my response was, well, the better question to ask is how much worse would the floods have been had they not invested billions of dollars in this flood risk reduction infrastructure? And in fact, if you look at past significant rainfall events in Singapore, before uh, the, these investments were made, the floods were much more significant. So rather than thinking about this picture as a failure, this was the largest rainfall in 40 years and caused minor delays in traffic, right? To me, this is a success. 
And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't push ourselves to build ever more resilient infrastructure. But a potential headline, uh, I'm not sure if this would pass our, our senior editor's uh, scan, could be uh, that the Water Management Authority of Singapore th saves thousands of homes during the flooding in July. And this is really the, the idea behind the Averted Disaster Award, to highlight these important uh, interventions and this important work, which oftentimes is long-term, is humble, and tends to go um, invisible. So you can get a lot more details about the award and how to apply on the website, which is live. Um, the two pieces of information I'll share with you right now is that um, the nominations are open and the deadline is mid-March and anyone can apply. So you don't have to be the architect of the intervention or even have participated in it in order to apply. If you know of an important risk reduction intervention that has uh, saved lives or reduced damage in communities at any scale, national or local, but that currently is not being talked about, is invisible, we want to hear about it. We want you uh, to submit these nominations so that we can celebrate these interventions. Thank you very much.